Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to go through the UFC card for tomorrow from a betting perspective. And as you guys probably know, we take a very contrarian approach to analyzing really all forms of sports betting, whether it be uh, MMA, basketball, or stock market. <laughs> Not to say that that's a, a, a sport, but one could argue. Um, again, the, the concept is to not use the, the betting markets to just try to be, you know, try to pick who we think is going to win, who's the most likely thing, try to figure out what value is based on our metrics and things like that. What we like to do, what I like to do, is try to gauge where the public psychology is uh, with the idea being that if the entire, you know, civilized world, so to speak, is on a very, very common narrative, then I'm not saying it's less likely to come in, but I'm just saying that that narrative is almost certainly going to be overbet. Overbet. So what we're trying to do is fade that and and pick something that's a reasonable outcome that is just being overlooked or being ignored by the common narrative. And what I found is that when it comes to UFC, it's particularly suited to this type of strategy because I don't know what it is, but but during the course of the week, groupthink is very, very powerful in this sport when it comes to the betting markets. And by the end of the week, usually what happens is Everybody settles on at the very worst, like a binary outcome where either one player, one fighter is going to win in this way or another fighter is going to win in that way. And there's just, it's just way too much chaos to be so confident in that type of result. So uh, the, 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 again, the overarching assumption is that the most common narrative, the, the thing that's the story that's the most easy to tell, it's probably that which is the most overvalued. So, um, what we like to do is is figure out what that is and then fade it with something reasonable. Now, I will tell you in advance that I almost didn't do this video this week because one thing that's that I need to be able to do is to have enough time to absorb what the public has been up to, you know, what they have been talking about. Or unfortunately, I've had some personal issues this week that I've had to deal with where I've not been really on top of the card as much as I usually am. So. Uh, I'm going to do the video anyway, just for um, for continuity, and hopefully the the, the concept is going to is going to help you guys learn something. But I will say that that I don't have as hot, you know, my finger is not as much on the pulse of the betting public this week as it might usually be, just because I haven't been following the betting markets and the common and the content and the narrative that much. But one thing I will say um, before we get into this, actually, let's just get into it. So here are the rules. Uh, first of all, we're going to be betting one thing on every single fight. And no, that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Uh, second of all, uh, we are going to be betting one unit on every fight. And that's, of course, not the best money management system in the world either, but we don't care. And for us, one unit is going to be $180, 10 times high. Good luck. You'll see. Uh, the other thing is that because we are contrarian, what we always like to do is presume that we lose the first X amount of cards on the night. And try to get all of our money back in the main event. Uh, so here we have 11 fights on the card. So what we need to do is make sure that in the main event, we're going to be betting on something that's getting at least uh, 11 to 1. Um, so I will go over one theme that I think is relevant for this week. And that theme is this. When people attack a betting card, the UFC card, they always break it down to, okay, what favorites am I going to pick and what underdogs am I going to pick? It's very rare that someone will come into it and say, oh, I'm just going to bet, you know, five favorites. Uh, you know, there's always, people are always trying to look for that underdog to kind of play, okay? And on this particular card, the way that the fights kept on getting rebooked and booked and, and, and replaced and things like that, it ended up with just a whole bunch of big favorites pretty much and only a handful of marginal favorites. And so what I, I believe to be the case is that those smaller underdogs are probably going to be the worst value because what happens is, is people are looking for which underdog to play. And in the absence of too many options, if there's only a handful of them, I think that people are going to be playing those probably more than they should. So that's going to be the first theme here is, is the, the probably the lowest, the, the, the most logical underdogs, like the lowest price underdogs or the, I should say the highest price underdogs are, are probably the worst bets on the card. Um, as a matter of fact, we're probably going to end up playing the small size favorites on the other side of that. 
So that's one thing you could do. But let's just kind of get into it. So you have Abdul Karim Al Asamo, uh, uh, how do you pronounce the guy's name, against Lois Ragzabov. And here's a situation where, you know, Razabov, he, he, he fought a couple of times ago and he got like 11 takedowns. And then his last fight, he ran into like Mateusz Rebecki. And, and that, unfortunately, is, is not, you know, it, it's not a recipe for success. I mean, that guy's a freaking animal, right? And he wasn't able to get any of his wrestling going at all. And um, he ended up getting, 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 getting wrecked, I think, in the second round. Let me just make sure that I'm not missing another fight because if I feel as though kind of missed one that he fought since then. No, that was the last one. And all of a sudden after one beating he took by some guy, and you know, people forgot about about his fight against Ribovich, where he did get 11 takedowns. So um uh the problem here is that he is one of those kind of like lower priced underdogs. And I think that people are going to be going to him. Um, so we're going to we're going to presume that the value is just going to be on the other side. And so we're going to do something with the with the Abdul Kareem Al uh, whatever. And uh, I, I don't really know where what else contrarian to do here. So we're just going to lay the 180 um, because they, they really haven't talked too much about how this fight's going to go. If in fact the uh, if in fact. Uh, if in fact he wins. What I might consider doing, I mean, what I was going to do is I was going to say that maybe if I'm going to take all those three or four mid-price favorites, I'll just throw them all in one parlay. Um, but it's just, listen, let's just stick to the rules of what we want to do. So one bet every single fight. And unfortunately, there's no common narrative to how this is going to go. So um, we're just going to lay the 180 here. And we're going to put all these in at the end. Uh, Zoom won't probably won't let me. Uh, so I might have to do it after I log off. I'm right, moving on. We have Ludovic Klein versus AJ Cunningham. I mean, short notice replacement. You know, they believe that the Klein is just going to wreck this guy. And, but yet on the other hand, no one wants to lay the minus 900 on Ludovic Klein. So I actually feel as though that Klein is probably value here in some weird way at minus 900. Um, so the only thing we can really do is play him, but I don't want to lay the 900. Um, and I haven't really, you know, gotten any lean on, on how this fight is going to go. You know, it seems like a relatively decent inside the distance line of minus, you know, to win by TKO is minus 165. We could play him by submission. Again, this is really just a tough card to be contrarian in. I almost want to lay the 900 just to be just on principle. Um, but we can't, so we got to try something. So what's the least likely thing people expect to happen? Well, let's let's look at his game logs. How about that? We'll look at Klein and see if he gets a whole bunch of knockouts. How about that? So let's see Klein. What are people probably playing here? Well, want a decision against Bahamandes. Okay, decision, 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 decision. So all decisions. So uh, maybe people feel as though that you can get value here, playing him by decision of plus 300. I don't know. So I guess we'll just play him inside the distance. It's pretty, it's pretty stupid, but we're going to do it anyway. Just again, follow the rules here. So Ludovic Klein by TKO or submission, minus 250. This is terrible. For 180. All right. Uh, maybe because it's just so terrible, we're just going to win everything this week. Christian Leroy Duncan versus Claudio Ribeiro. All right. This one, this this one actually, like, so you have, you know, Christian Leroy Duncan. Um, he's a, one of the smaller priced favorites, actually. Right. So as opposed to people trying to find those underdogs that have a chance to win. They're also trying to find the favorites that, that they can probably afford that they really think have a shot. So this Trishan Leroy Duncan at minus three twenty five, people are, people are really set on the fact that he's winning. Okay. Um, no one's actually betting on him like minus three twenty five, but no one certainly wants to bet Riviero because as they're saying, he's very, very wild. Uh, Christian Leroy Duncan is very, you know, very, uh, very technical. But what they are saying is that they're pretty confident the way this fight's going to go. That if Ribeiro wins, 
It's probably going to be a KO in the first round, so we can't bet that. Um, or if Christian Leroy Duncan wins, he's probably going to take over in rounds two or three um, and either get a finish or maybe decision. So the, the two contrary things we could do is we could play Christian Leroy Duncan round one, or we could play Ribeiro by decision. So let's take a look at some of these some of these uh, lines or, or Ribeiro in rounds two or three or something. So Ribeiro by decision is plus 1,100. That's pretty obscene. Okay? Um, Christian Leroy Duncan in round one, you really don't get all that much. So let's take a shot. Um, let's see what, how about Ribeiro laid here? Problems, I don't know whether it be submission or... Can he actually win a decision? Ah, you know what? We'll take a shot. Something to do. Ribeiro, round two. Oh, I don't necessarily want to do this in crap. It just by TKO. What if what if he does get a submission? Let's see. Let's see. Does he have any submissions on his record? Let's take a look. Ribeiro. That'll be the rules. If he has any submissions on his record then we'll just play him uh, to finish in round two. Otherwise, we'll just play him by TK. Let's see. KO, 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 KO. Literally no submission. Oh, he's got one back in 2017. Uh, no thanks. So we'll play Ribeiro. Why not? Round two plus 1,100 for 180, a.k.a. throwing money in the trash. All right. Um, Amon Zahabi versus Javi Basharat. So Javi Basharat, he's just going to grind him. He's going to, you know, either get a late submission, maybe, or win by decision because it's kind of a boring fight. So I guess if you want to be contrarian, you'll go for Basharat in a complete blowout in like the first round. So I think that's what we can do here. So let's see what Basharat is in round one. Basharat. I don't want to go by any particular method here, but Basharat round one plus 400. All right, that's something. So let's do that. Basharat round one plus 400. All right. Uh, Vinicius Oliveira, Oliveira versus Bernardo Spohash or Sopaj. I mean, all the money has come in on Sopaj here. Um, I don't know what they think of this guy. But if that's the case, we're just probably going to have to play Oliveira. Um, just, again, not a lot of – I don't have a big – my finger on the pulse of this card all that much. But I have heard a little bit about this, the Swedish guy. So we'll just go ahead and play Oliveira minus the 135 for one. Eric Anders versus Jamie Picker. All right, this one I, I have something. Okay. Um. Here's the thing. Eric Anders, I mean, they said he shouldn't be play favored by minus 500 over anyone, but I'm not playing Jamie Pickett, right? That's what people are saying. But that, that doesn't make any sense, okay? The other thing about Jamie Pickett is people still have this memory of everybody playing him and him getting knocked down in the first round by Jordan Wright. And since then, he literally is just the most, honestly, the most hated fighter. Just no one ever plays him, ever. And probably for good reason, because... Well, and DFS, exactly. Uh, specifically, he's not pretty, he's not very, very exciting. He's not very aggressive. I don't know. He's not the worst. As a matter of fact, he fought Bo Nickel and he actually did hold him off for a while in that first round. So we're going to take a shot here. No one will play Jamie Pickett except for us. So let's do that. Jamie Pickett plus the 390 for 180. Matt Schnell versus Steve Ursay. Um, so Matt Schnell is very chinny. Hear about that. Um, but um, Urshag does not really have that type of power, they're saying. I mean, if anything, he's probably just going to beat him up with volume, maybe get a submission here. Okay? But one thing I've not heard is anybody taking Schnell, like literally at all. And that's even plus the 340. I'm not saying that no one's taking him to win. I'm saying nobody has played has taken him even plus a 340. So we are going to take a shot. Match now plus the 340. So between Match now and Jamie Pickett, we are really on the wrong side of, of the public. And that's where we want to be.
All right. Uh, Umar Nurmagomedov versus Betshot Al McCann. I've heard people try to make a case that Al McCann's not that bad. Um, but no one's going to actually bet him. If anything, you'll play Umar by submission or something like that. But what you know, we could try. What is Umar by decision? Because I think that narrative kind of works. You know, um, ugh, it really doesn't because nobody wants to fight this guy. And I think he's going to probably just end him in the first. So let, let's see what Umar in the first round is. It's nice and easy here. Umar round one plus 175 and be done with it. Probably a bad bet. Probably a little square, actually. But I don't know. I just, I'm just feeling it. Alex Perez versus Mohamed Mokaya. All right. So uh, I, again, I've heard the case is made. <laughs> For why Mokayev shouldn't be this big of a favorite. They're, they're, they're talking about his fight against Malcolm Gordon, where he was, quote, unquote, in, in trouble. He really wasn't. Okay, They say that when he gets his takedown, he's not particularly busy. Okay, um, So we're going to go in with that narrative there. We are going to play Mokayev to finish. So let's take a look what that method is. Uh, win by TKO or submission would be just plus 100. That seems fair enough. A couple of long shots here, a couple of favorites. All right, Victor Petrino versus Tyson Pedro. So Victor Petrino is now everybody's everybody's favorite. Okay. He's aggressive. He's he's he yes, he's picked up his wrestling game, whatever it is. And all Tyson Pedro really has is just kind of like maybe round one equity. Um, but I still haven't even seen anybody actually taking Pedro. So we're gonna take a shot. We will take Tyson Pedro. Plus the 250 for 180. So again, what we've done is the, the real small favorites, we, we've we gone against them. I mean, excuse me, we the real small underdogs, if people are playing like Loic, we're going against them. The real small favorites like uh, like Spo, small underdogs like Sopage, we're going against him, you know. But all the other ones were, you know, we're, no one's actually playing these guys, like Tyson Pedro. So we're going to take a shot at him at plus the 250. Probably should play him like late or something like that because no one's expecting that. But this is, this is good enough. We're already going to lose all our money on all the other fights. So may as well just tack this one on. So I believe that that's it as we get to the main event. So let's, let's review, as they say in family, let's review the incredibly terrible answers that your partner gave us. Uh, Abdul Kareem Al Sawadi, um, you know, got to pick an underdog on this card. So I think everybody's going to be picking Loic. So as one of them, so we'll take Al Sawadi minus the one eighty. Uh, Ludovic Klein uh, inside the distance minus the two fifty. Uh, boy, oh boy, this is such a terror. So I guess it's so terrible. It's probably going to win. I don't know what to say. Claudio Ribeiro. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So Claudio Ribeiro, if he wins, it's going to be round one. If this goes to round two or three, it's going to be Chris and Leroy Duncan taking over. That's why we're getting plus 1,100. So plus 1,100, uh, Ribeiro round two uh, by Cam. Javid Basharat, I mean, he's going to win, but probably it's going to be boring, some takedowns, either a late sub or, or a candy decision. So we'll take the plus 400 in round one. I kind of like that one. Oliveira, again, everybody's trying to find that underdog to play. Sapaj is very, very taking all the money. So we'll just take Oliveira minus the 135. We're going to get back to that climb one in a minute. I might get rid of that one. Jamie Pickett, nobody plays him ever because they're smart. So we're done. Plus 390, Jamie Pickett. Matt Schnell is chinny against Steve Ursay. And it's Ursay, and we're not, they're not sure whether he's going to win by knockout or submission. They know he's going to win. Okay. So we'll take Schnell plus the 340. Umar, round one, uh, seems to make sense to me. Uh, nobody wants to fight this guy. I've heard the case made this other dude's not that bad, but we'll just play the plus 175 money in round one. Uh, Mokayev, uh, people, I guess people, because they, they just want to find the find flaws in these favorites. They're making up these stories that he's been bad the last couple of fights. I, I, I don't see that. So we'll just play him uh, inside the distance plus the 100. Tyson Pedro against everybody's darling Victor Petrino. Uh, 
no one's actually playing them. So again, plus 250 seems good enough for me. So we're going to lose all 10. And as a matter of fact, and we're certainly going to lose. This is a terrible bet. Uh, you know what? Because it's so terrible, it might be a bet. All right, so what are we doing? We got, we got to get something 11 to 1 in this last fight. And that is between uh, uh, Gaziev and Rosenstruck. Uh, Rosenstruck. So the good news about this is that people are pretty sure about what is going to happen. Okay? Well, there are a couple of ways this could go. So those are the ones we can't play. So Gaziev could get early takedowns and a finish. That's possible. But Rosen Street, or Rosen Street, can because he has that death touch, right? He can get an early KO, obviously. Also, Rosen Street has some fights where he's taken it to round five and round three. He actually has a round five finish. So I think people are probably playing some of that as well. And the other thing I've heard is that is that uh, Gaziev is it's listen if you just get the takedowns, but whatever, just can't get the finish. Maybe just maybe he gets the decision. But I don't think anybody's actually playing that. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to either play Gaziev by decision or Gaziev in one of the later rounds. Um, I think both of them are probably going to be close to 11 to 1. Maybe Gaziev by decision might not be. So let's just take a look and we'll see. Um, let's see. Gaziev by decision is plus 1,400. That's good. All right. So... Gaziev, five rounds of just, you know, taking him down. Rosenstruck just waiting for that fifth round to come to get that last KO that just never happened. So Gaziev to win by decision, plus 1,400 for 180. And let's just prove that we cannot do this while we're on Zoom. Place 11 bets for 1980. Nope, it's got chest location, making me log along. All right, so once again, uh, again, this is probably not the best contrarian breakdown I've ever you've ever seen because again I'm not as my finger is not on the pulse of the public as much as it usually is but we you know, we got some action and uh, we'll see what happens. Good luck everybody.